Well, hi everyone and a warm welcome. I'm Urs Gasser. I'm with the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University and I have the great pleasure to be involved in the global network of Internet and Society Centers. And today I'm particularly pleased to welcome uh, my friend and colleague Melanie uh, Dulong, who's joining us from Paris. And uh, Melanie, I'm so grateful that um, you carved out the time, despite uh, a busy schedule, to be with us. You're the director of the, Cent the Center for Internet and Society at CNRS, which is the French National Center for Science Scientific Research. And I was wondering whether you can uh, briefly describe what your center is doing and how it uh, relates to uh, the Fran French National Center for Scientific Research. Sure. Well, uh, first, uh, thank you very much, uh, Urs, for, for the invitation and the, the opportunity to, to share with the uh, colleagues and, uh, and friends of, uh, of the network of, uh, of centers uh, an update about uh, the activities of, uh, of our center. So the CNRS Center for Internet and Society was created um, two years ago by uh, CNRS, which stands for the French National Center for Scientific Research, which is one of the national organizations together with uh, universities, which pilots uh, research centers and uh, hires uh, researchers and uh, works with uh, with professors and structures, uh, academia. So the format of our center is a bit uh, peculiar mm -hmm. because we are composed uh, from two uh, in two different uh, parts. So first, a small uh, research unit with uh, eleven staff members. So two it's not that people. small, it's not that small. Oh, yeah, actually we were four last time uh -huh. we met when we, we uh -huh. hosted uh, uh, the last uh, NOC meeting during Paris IGF two years, uh, two years ago. So mostly researchers who are civil servants uh, employed by French CNRS a couple of postdoc based on projects, PhD students, and two admins who are also uh, civil servants provided by, uh, by CNRS. And unlike to most research centers in France, we are not associated to, to a university. So previously, we were a mixed unit with the Sorbonne University. But that's that's not the case. And so the second part of uh, of our center is a national wide network of um, actually all or well many of uh, French based and otherwise French speaking colleagues established uh, in other universities in other research centers, some also working in, in civil society organizations and working on our shared topics of, um, of internet and, and society. And as of last week, I think, because we were writing these reports, uh, we are, I think, 270 colleagues and the work of the past year has been to bottom up a company and help as a structuration of uh, all the activities of, uh, of this network uh, in clusters and in working groups. So this That's has super been interesting. particularly nice. The past two years, we had the opportunity to, to meet and network and introduce researchers working, for instance, in computer science labs and uh, lawyers, and they've developed projects on platforms, for instance, without us, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, with us. So this, this has been particularly lovely to see these collaborations mm -hmm. uh, emerging. Yeah. 
I was just about to ask, you know, what you're describing, in addition to the uh, structure of the center, it seems you have almost like a seismographic network of, of collaborators across France that may pick up on different signals in their disciplines of, of change or of uh, areas of opportunities as well as concerns. And along these lines, I, I was wondering, uh, you just mentioned platforms, what are some of the trending topics um, that you see, you know, kind of bubbling up in, in, in this collaborative network? Uh, and what are maybe some of the focus areas of, of your center? And uh, are these topics some sort of the ones we all talk about uh, globally? Or would you say they're also special French flavors to, um, to the topics and to, you know, the lenses maybe you apply? Yes and yes. Uh, without much surprise, uh, the biggest cluster and, and interest of, um, of our colleagues and of ourselves in, in the smaller uh, unit has been AI and how artificial intelligence can uh, be considered by social sciences with a critical perspective what are uh, the risks of uh, algorithmic uh, regulation. We have a working group of um, working with artists and studying how AI tools can be, can be used by, by artists. And we're going to co-host a, a conference on, uh, on the topic um, next, uh, next year. Another working group working on health has been so gathering medical uh, doctors, social scientists, lawyer, computer scientists, and looking at digital uh, digital tools. Some other projects um, have been working on surveillance, on fake news, on on the the modeling of the emergence of, uh, of scientific uh, topics and controversies um, online. And we had our yearly conference of, uh, of, uh, of the network um, last month. And the funniest session and the one for, for which we received uh, the best uh, feedback aimed at the the deconstruction of, uh, of AI and explaining what we all mean by, by AI uh, through the prism of our disciplines of our research project. And um, we use the participatory methodology and uh, on a sort of a shared blackboard the facilitator wrote all the definitions on, on, on AI and how we could try to escape maybe the hype around the term and refocus on what we actually mean by, by AI. Do we mean platforms? Do we mean digital tools? Or do we mean... Uh, machine learning so this was a uh, this was really really fun and we might have a second session <laughs> yeah and and uh, the term ai is and some of the conversation is almost like a rorschach test where you can uh, look at the picture and everyone can read different things into it so uh, i can relate to to the exercise you're describing yeah. um, Maybe just picking up on that topic, since you mentioned the interdisciplinary network you've built and the, the, the work you do is deeply interdisciplinary bridging between law and policy and computer science, for instance, but also including involving arts and artists. Um, what are some of the formats that, that seem to work very well to create these bridges, especially because we have in different disciplines so different uh, perspectives and methodologies on, on issues like AI, as we just discussed. What is it through events or do you have some sort of joint fellowship programs or is it mostly 
organized around um, projects, research projects, um, to build these bridges across the different uh, communities and different disciplines and methods? Well, what we've been doing before the incorporation of the research unit and a year after of, uh, of the network was a series of uh, workshops, of participatory workshops with facilitators and uh, post-its, basically. So the idea was to bottom up, bottom up identify topics, identify uh, maybe not leaders, but coordinators uh, who would volunteer to, to launch a working group and uh, then accompany them with sometimes a core funding or lend a room or help for communication. And they've been self-organizing and some have been organizing seminars. So in a very academic uh, way, some others have been working on projects and now currently we have three working groups one working on digital and the environment one working on internet governance and another one working on digital participation uh, they decided that uh, they want to write a report on 5g so we are using our core funding to to help uh, to help uh, them and support uh, this uh, this activity. Otherwise, one topic which is maybe more specific to France or at least Europe or to the personality to one of the co-founders of uh, of the center is uh, digital comments. We have one working group working on the comments and one other on open science and society. And uh, in a couple of days, a couple of us are participating to a pre-event at uh, IGF with other friends of, uh, of centers of, uh, of the NOC. And what is really interesting, we'll have a member of, uh, of the French uh, government, of the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, and who wrote a paper on digital comments. So with a few European colleagues, we're really excited because if governments embrace digital comments, as a diplomatic uh, tool, maybe we'll be able to, to develop projects uh, with, uh, with policy makers as we've been doing in, uh, in the past on, uh, on other topics. Thank you for this, this great overview. There is uh, so much uh, to follow up on and we have only limited time. I'm personally very curious to hear what the working group on digital and environment is up to, because I think uh, that's definitely a trending topic. Also, of course, in the, in the context of the sustainable development goals, I feel more and more centers that the NOC brings together are, are you know, sharing a deep interest um, and also young academics and people coming into the field are very concerned, obviously, um, what's the contribution of digital technology as we navigate this um, global challenge, but also what are environmental problems caused, um, or at least to which digital technology contributes in, in other ways. Uh, but I think we have to bracket that. Uh, likewise, of course, digital health, uh, you mentioned that's another core area um, that we, we hopefully have, have more time to explore uh, down the road, uh, given that we're in a pandemic where uh, digital um, tools also play an increasingly important role in, in data. Uh, if I may, however, I, uh, since you, you've been one of the thought leaders on, 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 on commons and the idea of a digital commons, uh, you've been um, among the, the leaders of, of uh, Creative Commons in France early on. You have been 
uh, one of the champions behind the Communia network, which was a uh, European-wide network dedicated to, to the commons and, and you've done work on, on many different uh, legal issues, a uh, uh, question of copyright and commons and the like, but also infrastructure and commons. And I, I was just wondering, as you were describing also some sort of the interest now, in, at least in, in a French policymaker in this topic, um, simultaneously looking um, at the discussion, it seems we are more in, the, in, in discussions or movements that de-emphasize the commons, where it's more about questions of sovereignty and who owns and controls what. And I was just wondering what your reflections are as you look back, I mean, 15, 20 years of your work on commons, where have we arrived uh, when it comes to this tension of, you know, traditional property type of structures or ways how we organize uh, um, uh, you know societies and and this some sort of more hopeful and and uh, perhaps also ambitious concept of the commons what are what has happened in in 20 years where are we today and what's ahead no small question but uh, you're the person who can answer it if anyone <laughs> Well, thank you very much for, for the very uh, thought, uh, thought provoking, thought provoking uh, question. Where are we? Well, with uh, surveillance capitalism and the concentration of, uh, of platforms and the risk which uh, switched from copyright to, to privacy. So, as you've also been been working on since uh, since 20, 20 years, some questions like intermediary liabilities uh, liability are still are still here. But what would be the contribution of uh, of the commons? Um, well, as you mentioned a few years ago, maybe a decade ago. Commons were mostly studying, uh, studied as resources, as digital commons. But uh, more recently, we've also been studying infrastructure commons, such as I can't resist the pleasure to show our beautiful last book on community. I can highly recommend it. Congratulations, and it's. It's actually online, and I hope we can uh, we can share the link uh, attached to this recording. So thanks for putting it into the public domain and into the commons. Yeah, yeah, it's open access. So the hope would be that the commons pro continues to to provide sustainable and valid uh, alternatives to the dominant uh, model, which is neither sustainable uh, economically or socially or environmentally. So that would be the, the hope that uh, our research and our advocacy will uh, contribute to, to develop uh, sustainable alternatives, which should be helped and legally financially supported by by governments and uh, the european commission has been has been really really active with the uh, result uh, respect funding uh, alternative uh, internet and decentralized uh, platforms and uh, similar similar efforts so maybe as a last some sort of substantive question, uh, building upon this this very helpful some sort of big picture assessment, we're living in interesting times, obviously, and um, and uh, looking at the internet and society space, we see different versions for the future emerging. Um, uh, we of course have have uh, large players, including. Uh, China, we, we talk a lot about China-US relations, and uh, uh, at least since the enactment of the GDPR, uh, Europe has become some sort of a uh, interesting player too, with 
uh, some people hoping that this may lead a third way how we think about digital spaces and privacy and all the things you've already mentioned uh, also now with efforts to create new infrastructures Gaia X is a is an example initiative out of Germany but joined for, by France and others right now uh, that's more infrastructure focused and so I'm just curious like What's your sense of the role of Europe and France in particular in these big conversations um, uh, that some sort of uh, span, uh, you know, all the different layers, since you mentioned internet governance, the whole stack of internet governance layers from infrastructure to copyright or privacy policy and business models and things like that. Do you think there is really such a a thing like a European way or a European approach to to think about these questions, but also to shape policy and and build new uh, infrastructures, or really say, well, we're all it's one global world and it's messy and complex, and uh, Europe may have different views on on several issues, but um, not necessarily a third way. What's your assessment? Is there is there a, a, a new clear pathway forward coming out of also the new commission and uh, what we have to expect over the next uh, few months? Yes, well, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, Europe has a lot to, to contribute to, to the global internet uh, governance with uh, the GDPR and framework of privacy, and uh, maybe also uh, a cultural perspective uh, with with uh, with regards to um, yeah internet governance and uh, this notion of uh, of the commons and citizenship citizens rights participation. We are currently, with four members of, uh, of our center, working with Singapore, surprisingly, on, on, a, on a project on smart cities and, uh, and AI in a very multi, multicultural uh, way. And that's really what's, uh, what's expected uh, from, uh, from us, is to contribute and to, to, to develop uh maybe a legal by design or social by by design uh framework for uh digital uh, digital infrastructure which uh would build privacy and and sustainability uh from uh, from scratch while while digital infrastructure is uh, is being uh, is being developed so definitely yes fascinating great I, I mean you mentioned it by invoking singapore and you also alluded to some of the other global collaborations that are on the way and i was just wondering as we uh, as we wrap up uh, what are uh, good ways to get in touch with you and learn more about the work your center is doing and you know, if uh, there are concrete opportunities for collaboration, how do we learn about that? Um, my sense is that's a, a question, at least we at Berkman Klein get a lot like, okay, this all sounds great, but how do I get involved? And uh, uh, so I wanted to offer you the opportunity to maybe highlight one or two possible interfaces for colleagues who may want to reach out to you to, to learn more about your work. So for French speaking colleagues, it's easier because it's possible to register to the mailing list or to join the mm -hmm. network and choose, uh, and choose working groups. But we also have uh, the possibility to host visiting researchers. We haven't developed yet a formal fellowship uh, program, but informally we've been hosting inviting talks when people had the opportunity to uh, travel for something else and be in Paris we would uh, the good old times when we were able yes. to meet in person yes <laughs> yes and we've been also hosting for several weeks or months visiting uh, researchers last year 
a couple from uh, Australia, one from from Mexico. So probably when uh, things get back to to normal, we'll organize a proper a proper program. And otherwise, one thing we really appreciated of all the previous uh, NOC events was of course uh, scientific conferences and and social events but also the breakout um, sessions where members of different centers could reflect either on a topic such as ai environment or sustainability or just reflect on the international the sorry the internal organization and development of a research center and for instance tools to to collaborate and engage with a national or linguistic or an international community so that was a particularly helpful for a younger center so i hope we'll get other opportunities to to discuss about uh, collaboration tools. So, Great. Yeah. I was just about to ask what will be on your priority list to, to talk about and share experience about. And um, I take it as an invitation to talk more about um, uh, collaboration tools in the broader sense. And I think particularly now, as we are having this uh, Zoom call during a pandemic, um, that's a topic more important than ever. Um, and it's just uh, striking that, uh, you know, despite all the progress made, it feels we're still um, such in a version 1.0 when it comes to collaborative tools. So I will be definitely eager to sign up for that breakout group and learn from you and all others who may uh, join us. And I will be happy to host and co-organize with you such a session. So Melanie, it's been such a pleasure. Time has been too short as always, but such a pleasure to uh, hear uh, about your center, about your work, some of the trending topics, some of the challenges, but also opportunities. And uh, I, of course, share your optimism that uh, before too long, we'll be able to meet again in person, hopefully with many others from the network of centers and uh, have longer and more sustained conversations thank you for your time Melanie. well thank pleasure. you very much and i i really really look forward to opportunities of uh, collaboration with uh, with colleagues and friends of uh, of the network of centers and thank you for for the idea of this this uh, wonderful series pleasure thank you